Um, so the purpose of this motion is to strengthen sanctions against Russia, and we're opposed to it for that reason because we're against the sanctions on Russia. Um, it isn't because people before profit or the genuine socialist left is in any way soft on Putin, on his gangster regime, or on his uh, crimes which are being committed against Ukrainian uh, people. In fact, we're the ones that have been consistent. When Chechens were being massacred, when Grozny was being raised, it was the socialist left that spoke out against it, while Tony Blair welcomed him with a red carpet, Bertie Ahern was shaking his hands. Um, or the start of this year, who spoke out about Russian forces in Kazakhstan there to intimidate a workers' uprising? It was the socialist left. There was nothing from uh, the government. Or who's on the streets today in Russia protesting against the war? To quote one of Putin's allies in the Duma, he described the anti-war protesters as, quote, leftist and Trotskyist scum. In other words, the comrades of the socialist left, of course, there are much more than the organized left on the streets. But we've been consistent in terms of defending the democratic rights of ordinary people in uh, Russia and opposing the disgusting and dictatorial regime of uh, Putin. Um, and we are also consistent in condemning, opposing the imperialist invasion by Russia of Ukraine and standing on the side of the Ukrainian people. But we don't close our eyes to the expansionism of NATO. We don't close our eyes to the 800 kilometer eastward expansion since the collapse of the uh, Berlin Wall. We don't close our eyes to the fact that the number of troops under direct NATO control in Eastern Europe has gone from 4,000 um, in October of last year to over 40,000 now. We don't close our eyes to the tens of billions of dollars that are being poured in, not to protect the interests of ordinary Ukrainian people, but to serve the interests of uh, Western capital. Um, and the truth is, that sanctions are an instrument of, to quote the French finance minister, total economic and financial war. Um, the people who are hurt by sanctions are not Putin and the coterie of oligarchs around him. It's ordinary people. It's estimated, it's estimated that the poverty rate in Russia is doubling or trebling as a consequence. These aren't people who are responsible for the war. They have no act or part in, uh, in the war, but they're the ones who are being punished. It's people in this country who are being punished in terms of the cost of living crisis that we're suffering, partly as a consequence. And we've now had these unprecedented sanctions for months. Have they worked? The, the polls suggest from Russia, from independent uh, opinion poll companies, um, a poll by Levada declared a foreign agent in Russia, that, quote, the, the confrontation with the West has consolidated people. People believe that everyone is against us. Putin defends us, otherwise we would be eaten alive. Putin's ratings have gone up. Why? Because he's able to use the sanction to say, it's the world is against us, the anti-war protesters in Russia, who we stand with, they're fifth columnists, agents of the West and so on. So even in their own terms, they haven't been successful. Why don't we do things that would actually make a difference for the Ukrainian people? Why don't we increase the amount of humanitarian aid? Why don't we lead the way in calling for the dropping of Ukrainian uh, debt, which would take up 12% of total state expenditure? The government's never committed to that. Why don't we shut down the shadow banking system used by the Russian oligarchs and the Amer American oligarchs and others in this country and hit the oligarchs where it hurts? Right now, Michal Martin is on the way or there in, uh, in Madrid at a NATO conference to attend a dinner. What on earth is the Taoiseach of a supposedly neutral country uh, doing attending a NATO conference? The truth is that the Irish establishment is looking to use this conflict to sidle Ireland up even closer and closer to NATO and to undermine what is left of uh, neutrality. And if people want to see the reality of what NATO is, look at the trilateral memorandum signed by Turkey, Sweden and Finland yesterday as the price of entry to NATO. The price of entry to NATO is for them to get rid of the arms embargo against uh, Turkey. It's to hand over, already today it seems they're handing over 10 
Kurdish activists to the Turkish authorities. They may well be tortured. They will be imprisoned without trial, probably for a very uh, long time, uh, to agree not to give any support whatsoever to the YPG. These are the heroic women fighters who fought against the Islamic State. That's the price of entry to NATO. And that should tell you something, that NATO is not a force for democracy or human rights or good in the world. It's a force for people like Erdogan, uh, another authoritarian ruler, and it's a force in the interests of US imperialism in particular. Thank you, David.